Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Michael, the Shy City Yacker. I specialize in Lake Michigan kayak fishing content. So if that's what you're interested in, make sure to like and subscribe. Today's video, we're gonna talk about spoons. Not all spoons are created equal. There are differences in spoons, hence why there's so many available on the market for, uh, for when it comes to salmon fishing. So the goal for today is to not overcomplicate this whole decision-making process on what spoons to get and uh, all the various styles. It's more so to educate you on this and hopefully cover some of the implications on how various types of spoons can impact and work within your total spread. And while I'm talking about this specifically in a kayak, the concepts here also do apply to pulling spoons in a boat spread as well. So with that being said, let's jump straight into this and we're gonna open up the box right here. Part of this video here is to show you the box I've been using for years. It's just a plain old uh, big box. All of these spoons sit in here vertically and it's been cool for some time. You can see it's been broken here. It's just from a lot of wear and tear. It's big and bulky. So in the kayak, I've never really been a fan of it, but there hasn't been a lot of different options available on the market. They all stand up and then sometimes, you know, from moving around, they'll slant over. So one thing I wanna share with you, actually, what I found is a great alternative that's uh, locally made, a gentleman makes it up in uh, Sockville, Wisconsin, TLC Tackle Spoon Tender Box. Look at the profile on this. Significantly thinner, as well as, if I were to stack it on top of it, and I'll try to hold it here, it's also quite uh, smaller, you know, in total area. So it's a smaller footprint for your spoons. I think this is gonna be a great option for the kayak here, as well as the boat guys. Boat guys like it as well, small boat, especially you're also trying to conserve your room as well. So, uh, so this is the standard box. This holds about, uh, let's see, each row is 33. So you're looking at uh, 66 total standard size spoons in here. They also make them in magnum size for the magnums. And then there's the 50-50, which has one side standard size, one size for the magnums. Um, I'm gonna show you here in a second, a little bit of a hack you can do to at least have some magnums in here as well. Before we get to that though, let's talk about spoons. And one thing, that I will say right off the bat is I love spoons. They are one of the most effective ways and easiest ways to be honest with you to catch salmon and trout year round on Lake Michigan or the Great Lakes for that matter here. So let me go ahead and start off by pulling out, uh, we'll pull out a Michigan Stinger Spoon. People here are very familiar with Michigan Stinger Spoons. Uh, these are highly effective, work very, very well on our area of Lake Michigan as well as on uh, various other parts of the lake. Um, but one thing about the Michigan Stinger Spoons is that these have a very thin profile, blank, uh, that they're pressed on. So it is a very lightweight spoon. Uh, we'll go even lighter, and we have the Warrior Spoons here. This is a flutter spoon, and this is a smaller profile compared to the Stinger, uh, and it is probably a touch thinner than the Stinger itself, and it's a very light, light spoon. Now let's talk about the Moonshine. Moonshine spoons, highly, highly effective and very, very popular in our area. Now these spoons are a bit thicker and heavier, noticeably heavier than both the Stinger and the Warrior Flutter Spoon. All right, remember, heavier Moonshine. And then of course, there are other ones here. We have a Fin Tackle. This one uh, obviously is designed differently. It doesn't look quite like the other spoons here in terms of its shape. It looks, this, more, uh, this looks like more of a oval. Uh, and uh, I will say that it is also a thin profile. Uh, this is gonna probably be just a touch thin, maybe about the same thickness, if not just a touch thinner than the Michigan Stinger spoons here. So it's also a very lightweight spoon. And as you can tell here, it's a single hook spoon uh, on here as well. And then we'll take a look here at some of the minis. Minis are very effective and very good. These are some Moonshine minis. Uh, a couple different brands make some mini ones here. Uh, same kind of a concept. These are thin and light. So now that I pulled out these couple of spoons here, they really kind of encapsulate the concept that I want to talk about here and covers the various kind of sizing and the weights of these spoons that are out here. Now, when it comes to the Moonshine, as I mentioned before, this spoon 
is the standard size. This is also the thickest and heaviest of the spoons that I pulled out of my box right here. Now, what does that mean? How does that translate into what you're doing and, and incorporating a, say, moonshine spoon or a similar spoon that's thick and a bit heavier into your spread? Well, that means that with that additional weight on the spoon, it's gonna need to be pulled at a decent speed for in order for it to have the proper action in the water. So where this becomes interesting is how you decide to set up your spread. Because if, uh, say for instance, a thicker, heavier spoon needs to be pulled at a little bit faster speed for it to get the right action, how does that impact your, the other uh, uh, presentations you have in your spread? How will that impact your flash or fly? Uh, do you have dodgers out? You know, if you pull dodgers too fast, instead of them going side to side, they'll start to turn over on themselves. And that's not necessarily an ideal action. It will catch fish, but it's not necessarily ideal. You want your, your dodgers to uh, sway back and forth. And so you have to really be, uh, be mindful of all of these things together. What your spread looks like, what's in it. Uh, if you're running a lot more spoons, then perhaps you might want to leave a dodger out of that spread and just stick with a say spin doctor because those are very speed tolerant or just a, another kind of a paddle on there since it already rotates around it's just going to rotate faster and that allows you when you think about that combination to go ahead and work these heavier spoons so that they are, are running ideally on the flip side of this when we look at say the stinger which is a much lighter thinner uh, even thinner and lighter is the Warrior Flutter Spoons, which I really like as well. They're very, very uh, forgiving in terms of your speed tolerance. Because they are lighter, it doesn't take as much speed in order for it to get going and, and start doing its thing. Um, so if you are going to be fishing a bit slower, 1.8, 2.0, uh, these are some of the spoons that I tend to incorporate more into my spread. They're also going to go well and work well if you're running uh, Dodgers uh, setups and all that because then you can work at a little bit slower speed, you know, anywhere from 1.8 to 2.3, 2.4, probably maybe even 2.5, perhaps. Uh, keep an eye on your dodges, though, to make sure they're not washing out. Uh, but these types of spoons are going to be way more forgiving and allow you to incorporate a different set of other um, lures and presentations into your spread while maintaining everything to ensure that they're all running in the proper you know, kind of presentation and the way they need to be. And I'll share this quick tip with you to help you along in this process to know whether or not the spoon that you uh, want to put out is going to run properly at the speed that you're going is just put it right in the water next to your boat or your kayak as you're trolling around. You got your line set up or whatever. You're at your trolling speed. Um, dip the rod tip in the water, hold it down there a few feet under the water and just watch the spoon. See how the spoon is moving with the boat. And if it looks like it's doing this thing in the proper kind of uh, motion, then that should work. If you notice that you're pulling it and it's not kind of going the way you want it to go, that could be an indicator that one or two things, maybe I need to kick up my speed or maybe I should try a different spoon, whether it's a heavier spoon or a lighter spoon, depending at what speed you're, you're tro uh, trolling at so that you can make sure you're getting that real erratic and good action out of the spoon itself. All right, so we just covered how the different size of the blanks factors into spoons. Now let's talk about the different color options available for the spoon blanks. Everyone's very familiar with the standard silver. We've seen it on the majority of spoons here where the spoon is printed on a silver blank, all right? Uh, the other types we have are gonna be your copper. And you'll see that this is a copper coated blank here. In fact, this is a copper confusion, a very good spoon as well. Um, and so you've got copper. And the other one is going to be your gold blank. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just a gold blank plated spoon. Now, these all have their time and place. While the vast majority of people will use the silver plating and they work fantastic year round, the difference here with the copper and the gold blank spoons is that these tend to work they will also work year round, but they definitely have their time and place where I found they tend to shine a bit more versus the uh, silver. Um, to overcast days like today, I mean, we've got cloud coverage, there's some light drizzling happening out there. Like the overcast, I'm breaking out a copper color or a gold color as well. Foggy days, days where there's not a lot of sunlight penetrating through the water. If the water is off colored, I tend to go and will have a gold and or a copper blank out there, spoon blank out there um, in the spread. 
It doesn't mean I'm taking all the silver plated ones off. It just means I'm gonna make sure that I lean into the gold and or copper uh, spoons blanks out into the water and capitalize off of that. I found those to be really, really work really, really well. And again, it does not mean that they won't work under bluebird skies and sunny skies, but I tend to lean into the silver plating on those you know, clear water, sunny days, you know, water, uh, the lights penetrating through the water really good. I tend to go to that. I want that really big, big flash out there. Um, and I think the difference here with the gold and the copper, especially when you have uh, foggy days out in the water, when there was a lot of fog out there, uh, when there's overcast, uh, the sun's not really penetrating through. I think that these gold and the coppers just really stand out a bit more uh, out in the water as well as these are great colors when you're looking to target some of the trout, brown trout, lake trout, um, uh, and it, they will definitely catch everything else, kings and coho and so on and so forth. So they are a great multi-species uh, type of blank colors to um, have out in there and utilize as well. Now let's talk about the two different sizes here, the magnums versus the standard size spoons. Now, depending on the brands, you're gonna have your standards like a moonshine, um, Stinger has their Stingray size, which is somewhere in the middle between a Magnum and a standard. It's it's like in between the two. It's not quite as big as a Magnum, but it's not. Uh, it's but it's bigger than a standard size. So uh, they they have their place and they do work really really well. Um, and what's great about the, in fact the Stingray size um, spoons from Stinger is that it gives you a larger profile, yet it's still on that thin light blank. So again. Um, it's more speed tolerant and allows you to kind of go at a wider range of speeds and this thing still give you the proper action in the water. Something to keep in mind. All right, so as we talk about the Magnum versus the standard size spoons here, when's the right time to run one versus the other? Well, there is no right or wrong perhaps. What I will say though, is that there are kind of preferred times and situations when you may want to consider running one over the other. I'll say it like that. Right now, in fact, is a great time to be running your Magnum spoons. Why is that? Well, let's take a look and think about what's happening right in the water right now. This is springtime, our water's starting to warm up here in Lake Michigan, it's in the mid 40s or so. Uh, we've got our coho have already come up and they're starting to show up and be some good fishing for them. People are also looking for uh, a spring king. Now, the reason why these fish are in the harbors or near, right off, right in front of the harbors or near shore is because they're following the bait and that bait is the mature, you know, seven to nine inch or so, maybe even bigger, uh, mature alewives that are coming in by the megatons. I mean, these mega schools of alewives are coming in to spawn for their spring spawn. And so these fish are coming in and by having a bigger profile, right? Remember, these alewives are seven, eight, nine inches. This, this is gonna be representative of that profile. And if they're keyed in on the large alewives to feed on, that's gonna greatly increase your probability of getting into some of these bigger coho right now or the spring king, which is highly coveted. It's nothing like a silver spring king for sure. Um, so it's just, it comes down to matching the hatch, matching that size uh, to capitalize off of what these fish are largely targeting. Um, and that's if you're looking to, you know, go after some of the bigger fish that are out there. Uh, you can still run some of these smaller ones. I mean, these small guys, right here, like the little walleye size um, spoons are fantastic for the spring as well because you have a lot of, you know, smaller cookie cutter spring coho out there and they're feeding on some of the smaller, you know, alewives that are out there. Um, and so the smaller profile, I, you know, I tend to look at it as a numbers game. You want numbers, you can downsize and you're, just, you're gonna limit out fairly quick on a, on a good day. Um, whereas say uh, the Magnum size here is, might have it out there to look for like the bigger, possible trophy size fish in the spring. Um, that's just to kind of give you uh, an idea. And again, a lot of times people like running these magnums outside of the spring when you're fishing deep. And by deep, we're talking about maybe deeper than 100 feet, maybe 80 plus, definitely 100 feet or deeper, go big, go big, you're down deep, um, you're looking for big fish down there, whether it's big lakers, 
big kings, big coho. Um, go bigger if you're fishing deeper than 100 feet for sure with a magnum. Um, above uh, above that 100 foot or so, um, you can mix it up, but I tend to have more success when I run my standards and some of the stingrays when I am above 100 feet of water, you know, shallower rather. Uh, than 100 feet of water. So that is your crash course on spoons for salmon fishing. Hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, throw it a thumbs up, like, subscribe to the channel. I am working on an in-depth seminar in details, in so much more detail on spoons. And if you're interested in that, make sure to join my Discord down below. All the links to my Patreon, the videos will go up there as well for these more in-depth learning uh, courses will be there. If you want to support, it's great, greatly appreciated. I do appreciate you guys watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.